Hey, what's going on, fam? Nice to see you. Ah, happy Tuesday. I'm over here in Houston and it has been pouring all day. So uh, I'm on here a little bit later than I normally am. My kiddos are both at home and they're sleeping. Uh, somehow I thankfully got them down for nap time. So I'm on here a little bit later, but I still have showed up. And um, it's been a great day. Been super busy with strategy sessions. Um, and just I feel like sometimes strategy sessions end up in themes that are happening for people. And so the theme that I was running across today um, that I thought was super interesting um, and I wanted to share it out with you guys was talking about offers um, and knowing when do you have an issue with offers and how does all of this stuff actually tie together. So when we're talking about offers, it's understanding where are you positioning yourself, what's the value you're delivering, and obviously most importantly, what's the price point that you're delivering it at. So um, that's what I want to talk about today. Um, if you watch this later, hit me up with a replay. If you're here live, just hit me hashtag live. I'd love to chat with you. I'll take any questions um, that you have. So when, when it comes down to do I have the right offer? So one of the things I was running across is if you are chronically stuck within any sort of plateau, any sort of framework within your offer. And if this is an offer that you haven't yet validated, you're on a different track than if you've actually validated your offer. And what that means is validating an offer means having sold it to the marketplace for the price that you valued it at or above at least three to four times. So say, hey, if you're here, uh, let me know what your offer is, because that's what we're talking about today. So I'd love to hear what everyone um, is offering out in the marketplace. And so um, or it, if you're watching this later, just hit me with the hashtag replay. So, hey, Tracy, what's up? Let me know. Um, you can feel free to add what your offer is below. So the combination of understanding that you're stuck is knowing where you're at. So if you are struggling between that kind of eight to 10K a month, if you're struggling there and you feel like you have had like the 10, 15, 20 years of experience, it is 100% an offer issue. Um, if you are not able to scale up if you're not able, hey, Aaron, what's going on, buddy? Thanks for joining me. Um, and I've seen this happen. And so what happens is that you get into a loop of, I offer this, my market is pricing it at that. I get onto SS calls and those people say it's either too much or they're barely there. And so that has taught me that this is what I need to offer. So let's pretend your offer is like $2,000. So if you are talking to people, your offer is $2,000, your messaging is likely going to attract those people who can afford that or think they can afford that. They get on the call with you and then they say, oh man, 2,000, I'm gonna have to pull it together on two different credit cards. So immediately you get a feedback loop back that says, ooh, 2,000 sounds like the upper limit of where things could be at and you end up hitting rinse and repeat on that cycle over and over again. And so what this does is uh, if everyone else who's joined, say, hey, let me know if you're here. Uh, the question I asked earlier is, what is your offer? So you can imagine what this happened. So let's say your offer's at $2,000. Then you get clients, and for you to even reach a 10K month in a business, you'd have to get five clients in that month who are at that point. And so you put out organic, you might be running traffic, you might be doing ads, you do all of these things and you still keep getting stuck. So what do you end up doing? Psychologically, you've been impacted. So now you think I'm going to have a low front end offer. So you come up with some kind of lead magnet thing that's like 99 bucks or 199 or 197 because 97 is on trend. And now you try to sell that. And then you have a free webinar that's supposed to go down some tunnel and that tunnel 
<laughs> funnel, whatever, it's close. <laughs> Hashtag tunnel, it's the new funnel for 2020. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, is hey, is what's going on? Hi, Sally. Uh, let me know what your offers are, guys. Uh, Sally is brand strategy as well, messaging and lead gen, but she does it for health businesses, which is super cool. Sally is doing fantastic. Uh, Infinite, uh, let me know, or Infinity, sorry. Infinity, let me know what your offer is. So what ends up happening, back to our example, so then they get into scarcity mindset mode and then they start selling stuff at the 99 or uh, $197 offer. What that does then, is the people whose water was up to here, now we're finding even people who are down at this level. I'm going as low as my computer will let me. So what that does then is they literally, let's say it's the $200 offer, they have to get five clients now to make $1,000. So instead of going in the right direction, they got pushed down by their market and their mindset and their messaging and their brand messaging they got pushed down in the opposite direction. So this live is meant to be short and simple and sweet. If you do not price your value of what you deliver at where it should be at, your revenue will constantly be stuck because you have only a certain amount of time every week to get there. If you are under 10K a month, you can barely hire anybody full time who's in the US and give them benefits. So then now you're dependent on contract labor and we know how contract labor goes and we know how reliable it is. So your revenue caps right there, which means you have capped how you can scale your business and add people to grow. So you are constantly stuck in client fulfillment of your $200 people or your $2,000 people and you're not out there marketing and you're not out there selling. So that doesn't fill your lead pipeline. And so then you're offering discounts or you're trying some other things and you think the low end is the way to go. And then the other problem that happens is when you're stuck at that revenue level, your profits have also shrank down quite a bit. So the thing that I help with is when you're talking about how to utilize branding in your best interest, it's taking the fact that the brand is helping you support why are you worth what you're going to be charging? So there's two pieces here. One is the actual branding. How do you look? How are you showing up? How are you positioning yourself messaging wise? How clear on what you do are you? How clear on your avatar are you? And the other piece that many people struggle with is not being able to verbalize succinctly what it is that they actually do. So people just keep scrolling, people lose touch with what's actually your offering versus what Betty Sue is offering, and you miss some of those opportunities. The other piece too is, is when you've been selling at 2K, that is how you learn to speak, that is who is in your friend list, that is who you've been marketing to, and that's how you talk. That is how you write your copy. So you continue to attract that. So, being able to tweak the levers and pull some things up and down and know where you're going and know what your focus is and actually be clear, what is my path forward? What is the strategy? And what should I be charging in order to be able to increase my revenue, increase my profit, scale by adding people to my team, which then allows me to actually create a brand that's going to be sustained what and then the other piece that that does is it is not going to it's not going to leave you room to try to add on a second business a third business a random course xyz so that's pretty much what i had for today i want to say hey to some people here um i just wanted to get right down to the offer piece uh because i see a lot of people struggling with that so uh, what's up, Shauna? How you doing? Uh, let's say hey to Sally. And then is. So let me know if you have any quick questions. I'm about to hop on a, a client presentation, but I have time for maybe a question or two just to see what the audience is at. So clarity, how you talk to your clients. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think uh, the thing I see over and over again is when you are an expert at what you do, you can talk to other experts 
and you guys are like getting geeky and you're all into it and you're all at the same level and you're excited. Go ahead, Iz, drop your question. Um, I'm going to call you Iz until your name actually changes infinity. <laughs> um, but I think Iz is a cool name. So we end up talking our jargon to each other. And there is a huge gap between speaking jargon to each other and speaking the language that your actual avatar, not who you're currently selling to, not those people, not talking about those people, who you want to be selling to, there's a huge gap in that language and how they're speaking. That is some of the research work, the legwork that needs to be done. Um, okay, so Aaron is asking, where does user experience fit into branding? Um, so user experience, Aaron, it is everything from the very first moment that they click your name or click your company's name and they see your banner image. It begins from there. They look at your picture first because they want to make eye contact with the human. They look at your banner image. They try to get an idea. And this is all subconscious. Within four seconds, their brain processes you and puts you in an index. Like, are you low, medium, high price wise? Are you low, medium, high in terms of quality? All those things get categorized. The only caveat to this, if you have a warm lead, if it's a reference from somebody else, they will hit the override button and give you some latitude. Um, so it begins from there. And then the next step is how was it to use your booking link? How easy was it to book a strategy session? What were the types of questions that you were asking on that application? You're already pre-framing a sale by the types of questions you ask. They understand that who's going to be the leader when they jump on the call, or is it going to be one of those blind leading the blind things? Um, and then every, every, every step from there, Aaron, so from when they first meet you, how did they meet you? Did you get on a call or did you take the time to set up a Zoom? Did they see you? Do they know you? What was their first email? How long after they saw, signed on with you, did they get an onboarding email or a welcome email or a, hey, what's up? Here's how you contact me. How quickly did they get your contract? And literally every single touch point from there on out. Um, and it kind of the user experience varies based on the type of business you have and how you're delivering that. So obviously you being a lawyer, you're gonna have more opportunities for like phone calls and in-person and one-on-one -on -one meetings. A lot of people who are on here, um, at least my fan base is like coaches, consultants, and they're delivering things through modules or group coaching. That's a completely different uh experience so okay so is is i'm actually unsure on how to find my avatar because honestly my offer works for everyone Ooh, all right you you need to take like you need to take like three steps back and i know you're super new into our coaching program um so i think what you need to do is when you say i'm going to just leave you with this is when you say my offer works for everyone what people what the market hears is that it doesn't work for anybody so it's opposite of what you think. I could do this for you. You sound like kind of like somebody who's on the street that's like, you need a bag, you need a bag, you need a bag. I got bags for everyone. And then the person immediately is defensive and is like, you don't have a bag for me. You don't even know me. So when you have something that's starting out like that, there needs to be either problem centric, some kind of guardrails to lessen your market, or it needs to be um, niche centric, niche centric or avatar centric around who it is that you help. That will help you to get a little bit more um, targeted marketing. Otherwise you are, I, I always talk about the kiddie pool versus getting to the adult swim up pool. Like people are stuck at the kiddie pool at 2000 and I want them to get to the adult swim up bar pool. But when you do something like that is you're in the ocean. You are just in the Pacific ocean looking for something to float on. I want to do that. And it also sounds non-believable. I got you. I can do anything for you. Any price. Nothing is a problem. I'm a magician. People are like, no. Okay. So, uh, all right, Sally. So good. Getting content ideas for who I want to reach. Thank you. Okay, guys. Uh, I think those are all the questions. Appreciate you joining me. Um, would love to hear what your niches are or avatars are or offer. So drop it in the notes if you haven't had a chance to. Uh, let me know if this was useful. Let me know if this was helpful. Um, I'm always coming up with topics to go live. So I go live weekly on my personal page. Like to drop a ton of value. And then I also go live in my Facebook group called Life. 
um, and I go live there on Thursday. So I'm always looking and interested in what my audience wants to hear and know more about. So, all right, guys, have a great Tuesday um, and go take a look at your offer. If you need help, you know who to call. Okay, bye.